Today we're going to be bringing you Marvel's Damnation Event, a crossover event that featured Doctor Strange, Ghost Rider, Scarlet Spider, and a few others. And hell came to Las Vegas. It was a pretty cool event that I really did enjoy, and if you enjoy audio dramas of your favorite comic books and stories, check out our other channel, Comic Storian, where you can get all of this content first. This is a channel where we re-upload everything as an archive to appease the algorithm gods. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into Marvel's Damnation. There was a war. One where the world saw the destruction of Las Vegas and many of those who lived there. The entire city was claimed by fire and wiped clean from the face of the earth, all because they weren't strong enough. All the heroes could do was promise to everyone that they would never fail them like that again. However, there was one man who recently had an expansion of potential, all thanks to an encounter from the would-be replacement, Sorcerer Supreme. Doctor Strange floats down, touching the dirt where the city once stood, focusing all his power into one spell. He picks up some dirt, and once he's ready, he lets go, releasing all of his power. It was as if the hands of time started to turn back, pieces of a ruined city slowly being put back together. And once it was done, Las Vegas was restored, renewed, resurrected. As Strange tried to catch his breath from such a powerful spell, Hawkeye asks what the hell did he just do? Strange tells him, You may call yourselves Avengers, but at some point you have to live up to that name. This is your job. The mighty Thor then asks, But raising a city back from the dead? That is a powerful magic. You of all people know that it will come with a cost. And Strange says, Indeed it does. But whatever the cost may be, look what it paid for. From one of the restored buildings, a woman walks out, and from the crowd her son runs over, hugging his newly returned mother. The people are healed, given back the things that were once lost, and this is what they do as heroes. This is the world, they. But before Strange could finish his thought, there's a rumble, and something hellish pushes its way up through the ground, knocking everyone back down. And that's when Strange sees it, a strange demonic obelisk in the middle of the street. A ghastly voice calls out, Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to something truly monumental, historically momentous, the grandest of all grand openings. Welcome to the Hotel Inferno. A VIP ticket blows through the air and Strange picks it up. Falcon asks, what did he just do? Let me handle this. He sets off walking into the hotel, but as soon as he does, the doors shut behind him, meaning that whatever he's facing, he is facing alone. He looks around, seeing slot machines as far as the eye can see. And when he asks a waitress where he can find the owner, a bouncer steps in, asking, Is this guy bothering you? The demon bouncer grabs Strange, and Strange says, Wait, I recognize you. Osmodeus. If you're here, that means... But just then a voice tells Strange, It is such an honor to have a celebrity endorsement. Strange stares at the man in the red suit, simply stating, Mephesto. Strange prepares to cast a spell, but Mephesto tells him, Whoa, whoa, whoa! You misunderstand the situation here. I had no part of this. In fact, I'm the victim. The Dark Lord Mephesto has been wronged. Here, see for yourself, Strange. Suddenly, everything begins to change, and Strange finds himself sitting with Mephesto in a movie theater. The light's beginning to dim as the movie begins to play out. Mephesto explains that he was just on his throne, minding his own business. Even though things in hell had gotten a little stale. But a deal's a deal. And somebody's gotta punish all the wicked. However, that's when the most wicked place of all suddenly dropped in my lap. With all these new souls, I needed a new way to entertain them. And that's when the Hotel Inferno was made. That's when everything changed. Our newly claimed property was taken from us and put here on Earth. Earth! This place is so full of cheap trash. It's so beneath one such as me. That's not even the worst part. It's these people. The scene changes again, and while Strange is sitting at a desk, Mephesto looks out onto the city, stating, Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I could learn to embrace its potential. A lot of room for growth, especially in my line of work. Mephesto then leads Strange into the vault, telling him, I can't say it hasn't been good. Not once you sit on a fortune like this. Strange looks around at all the stacks of money and gold, and as he picks up one of the gold bars, he realizes that this money is made from the souls of the damned. He says that he's locking away mortal souls in this vault, and Mephesto asks, Did you not see my card? It's kind of what I do. 
But the thing is, these folks are more than deserving of a little fire and brimstone. Well, mostly deserving. It's all subjective, really. Strange then says, whatever you're doing, it stops now. It's time for you to crawl back to your kingdom and Mephesto shouts asking, did you not just hear? You are in my kingdom. The scenery changes once more and now they are on a stage with Mephesto yelling, sin, it doesn't take much. In all your natural conditions, humans want to rip each other apart. They want to see blood. You are here to give them that. Strange tells him, no, you're wrong. There are plenty of good people out there who won't buy what you're selling. There will always be heroes. And Mephesto says, perhaps you'd like to make a friendly wager on that. Come on, the soul of the Sorcerer Supreme would be some serious bragging rights down here. Strange then asks, and what if I was to win? Mephesto goes on, all of this goes away, and I go back to my realm. Strange tells him, that also means that you'll free the souls in the vault, and Mephesto coyly tells him, fine. Strange pauses for a moment and then says, okay, I'm in. A blackjack table appears to pop out of the ground with Mephesto stating, Wonderful! Let's deal. How about we wager the souls of your hero friends outside? A few moments pass when suddenly Thor, Falcon, Hawkeye, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel begin screaming as their bodies heat up. Mephesto smiles, asking, What is it they always say? Oh yes, the house always wins. It's about time we had some new Ghost Riders. Later that night, at the home of Strange's friend Wong, he's watching TV when he hears a scratch coming from the door. The scratching gets louder, so Wong sighs, getting up to open the door. He looks down to see the ghost of a dog, and Wong tells him that he's allergic, and slams the door shut. The dog walks through the door, stating, Well, that was kind of rude. Wong walks away, stating, So is scratching at the door of the house of Wong, ghost dog. The dog says, My name is Bats, by the way. I've heard a lot about you. You may not know who I am, but we have a friend in common. The doc needs your help. Wong spins around yelling, Steven has made it perfectly clear that my counsel is no longer something he values. Now, if you'll excuse me, and Bats tells him, yeah, yeah, bad blood, I get it. But it's not just the doc who's in trouble, it's at Vegas. Something is happening in Vegas. Wong looks down at the cauldron, watching the events of Las Vegas being destroyed and then resurrected all at the hands of Doctor Strange. He grumbles, stating, unbelievable, the arrogance, the hubris. It's, and Bats asks, pretty typical for him, huh? I tried to warn the doc, but nobody really listens to someone who poops on your lawn. Wong sighs, stating, the Dark Lord and his army are a powerful one. They're going to need the help of those who have faced this kind before. And Bats asks, ooh, are you going to get the Hulk? That would be cool. And Wong tells him, no, we're in need of the Hunter, the Knight, the Slayer, the Order, the Fist. And to lead the way... The Rider. Just moments prior to all of that at the dealer's table, though, Doctor Strange sits down, stating, Let's talk this over. And Mephesto asks, What's the matter? You don't like the odds? And Strange tells him, No, those I actually like. So why don't you do me a favor and stuff the brimstone act in your back pocket and hit me? One of the demons standing around the table punches Strange in the face. And Strange rubs his mouth, stating, Right, uh, not that kind of hit. Mephesto deals two cards, and as the demons on the cards scream, Death, death, hate! Mephesto asks, You played Brimstone Blackjack before, right? Strange watches as one of the cards tries to slither away, and as another demon stabs it to stop it, Strange tells him, Of course I have, it's just been quite some time. Just, uh, hit, er, give me another card. Mephesto plays the next card, stating, You know, I heard that Loki played you like a fiddle. Don't worry, we've all been there. Strange tells him, you heard wrong. So Mephesto asks, really? Damn, my lady friend was pretty sure about that. Oh well. And it is at this moment that things begin to go south because this is where he got mad. And when he gets mad, he tends to do things a bit out of character. Strange asks, excuse me? Mephesto laughs. <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Most people you hang around with end up with me. You should know that by now. But yeah, my lady friend, pretty little thing by the way, she told me everything. From empirical, not being the man that he used to be, awful, just awful if you ask. Mephesta draws the fourth, and he places it down, and he looks at it, stating, You won? Strange gets up fixing his cloaks, telling him, I expect you to keep your end of the deal to return to your realm immediately. And all that nonsense about your lady friend, 
Do try harder to shake me next time. It was pretty insulting. If you knew anything about me, you would know that I don't have any friends. Not anymore. Now get the hell out of Vegas. As Strange walks, the card on the table begins to scream. Cheetah! Cheetah! That dude's a cheetah! I wasn't supposed to be next in the deck! All the demons get up and they all surround Strange and he sighs. Ah, well. I did in fact cheat, but you weren't supposed to know that. He then begins to cast the bolts of Balthak, followed by the flames of Faltine. Mephesto laughs, telling him, I know a spell that works too! By the hairy fists of Justin! Strange asks, what? And then Justin the demon punches Strange with his massive fist. After being beaten and tied up, Strange asks, What's next? Are you going to break my hands? Bend there. Mephesto tells him, Oh no! I've got something much better. And that's when Ghost Rider Thor walks in. Thor's hammer glows with fire, and then she swings, hitting Strange in the legs, shattering his bones. Meanwhile, over at the bar, Wong sits with his drink, and Bats tells him, As much as I love spending time in countries that all the dogs are able to sit at the bar, why am I sitting at the bar? And Wong tells him, You told me that you would help Steven, even if I preferred you didn't. But Mephesto is a powerful enemy, and we need powerful allies. Just then there's a crash as a man is thrown across the bar, and Bat says, Ooh, I'm betting that has something to do with it! And moments later, Blade runs through, killing the vampire soccer fanatics. He looks at Wong, telling him, The fact that you and the dog aren't drinking blood must mean that there's a job. Later, in the misty mountains of Wondagore, Wong looks up at the giant beast, stating that he understands how important their work is, and he hates to be the one to intrude. The giant beast before him roars, and Bats tells him, I really can't argue with that. There are these demons, and... But just then, the monster is shot, and a woman walks out asking, Did you say demons? Well, don't worry, Elsa Bloodstone's going to fix them up, right after a long, hot shower. Meanwhile, over in New York, Wong tells Iron Fist that there's something happening in Las Vegas. Steven has, and Iron Fist stops him. You know, I do watch the news. It's the devil thing, right? Let's do it. Later on the rooftops, Moon Knight tells them, Sorry, but I got other things to attend to. I'm out. But good news, gentlemen, I'm in. After that, Wong and Bats head to Florida, just outside of Citrusville, to recruit Dr. Voodoo and Man-Thing. Wong asks, didn't Man-Thing learn to speak? And Voodoo tells him that he has since lost the ability to talk, though they can still communicate through nature. Wong then asks, what is Man-Thing stating now? And Voodoo says, Man-Thing would like your dog to stop urinating on his leg. And Bats yells, I can't help it! It's instinct! Finally, at a gas station in the middle of nowhere, a man sets his drink on the counter. I'm gonna need this, 26 on 12, and 2 on the scratchers. As Johnny Blaze walks out of the store, he says, No! And Wong tells him, We need your help. And Johnny says, You always do! But about 50 miles out, there's a little girl buried in an unmarked grave. Nobody helped her. So now, she gets vengeance instead. Wong tells him, Look, Stephen Strange, it... But Johnny stops him again, stating, He's due for an ass kicking. Maybe if you stopped posting his bail, he would stop getting out of trouble. Wong tells him, I would agree with that, but this is something different. Johnny follows up. That's right. Them hoary hosts of Hogorth finally get sick of hearing him take their name in vain. Johnny gets on his bike, and as he starts to take off, Wong tells him, It's Mephesto! He's come to Earth and brought hell with him. Later that night, in a destroyed building, the one that was once known as the Sanctum Sanctorum, Wong sets everyone down, stating that he would like to thank them for joining him. He's gonna be blunt. Not all of them are going to make it back from this one. Bats chews on a Spider-Man plush, stating, Not with that attitude, you aren't! And Wong continues on telling everyone, If you would, open the folders in front of you. As you all know, Steven attempted to resurrect Las Vegas. In doing so, he summoned Mephesto into our realm. Since then, Mephesto's influence has started to spread. Any minor sin or infraction has resulted in the individual forfeiting their soul. As several members of the Avengers, namely Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Hawkeye, Falcon, and Thor, can sadly attest to. All of them were chosen for a reason. They are, well, either dead, damned, or carrying darkness within them. None of them are without sin. You were all chosen because you are the only hope that we have to fight Mephesto without adding to his ranks. So if anyone has any last minute objections or wants to leave, this is your chance. Your specific objectives are in your folders. We leave in 30. Voodoo raises his hand and says that Man-Thing cannot read. Perhaps I could read the plot aloud to him. Wong says the plan is simple. You will keep all the Ghost Rider Avengers away while Bats and myself break in to get Steven out. We must be careful with the citizens. They are likely demonized at this point, so hurt them if you must, but do not kill them. That means you, Moon Knight. Once everyone's ready to go, Wong leads everyone into Las Vegas, and just as the fight begins, Blade is quickly knocked out. 
Everyone readies themselves to figure out what just happened, but as Blade is screaming in pain, they all see Thor's hammer sitting on Blade's chest. As the mages try to figure out a way to remove the hammer, Elsa Bloodstone tells everyone, it looks like our problems are about to go from bad to worse. The Ghost Rider Avengers all begin to charge in, but Moon Knight stops and asks, Am I crazy or is it raining fire? Everyone looks up into the sky to see hundreds of flaming arrows, and Voodoo quickly puts up his shield, telling everyone to get behind him. As some of the arrows begin to hit people, Voodoo says that they're gonna have to retreat for now. Just then, a cement truck is thrown into the Ghost Avengers. And Wong says, who would be mad enough to do? But Scarlet Spider comes swinging in, telling everyone, Hey, come on! That's not gonna keep him down for very long! But you're gonna be safe with me! Everyone looks at Scarlet Spider and he asks, What? I live here! And Bats yells, We can't leave yet! Blade's down with that hammer burning a hole in his chest! And Wong says, I know, but we're not here for Blade, we're here for... As another blast separating Wong and a voice telling them, It's very nice of you to come. Welcome to hell, old friend! Wong looks back to see a Ghost Rider Doctor Strange asking, Steven? As Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley walks through the streets of Las Vegas, he thinks back to his most recent run with Mysterio. He could have taken him out for good, but instead he let him go. Maybe because they're too similar? Two guys just trying to turn their lives around? Whatever the reason, he should probably go check in on Aunt June to make sure that she's doing okay. Except as he walks into Mercury Towers, he sees June isn't at her usual slot machine. He runs upstairs to her room, knocking on the door, asking if she's there. It slowly opens, and instead of seeing June, he sees a little girl with red hair. The girl tells him that she's been waiting for him to show up, and Ben asks, Have we, uh, met? She tells him no. Her name is Jezebel, and right now she's going to need him to sit down and listen for a moment. Ben asks her, Where's June? And Jezebel tells him that her employers have her. But before he flies off the handle, Ben tenses up, shouting, You have no idea who you're messing with! And Jezebel says, I'm pretty sure I have an idea. Now sit! Just as she finishes her sentence, her eyes glow white, and Ben is launched across the room and into a chair. As he falls over, he tells her, All right, uh, I'm listening now. Just then there's an earthquake, and Jezebel says, It seems they're moving faster than I thought. Just climb up onto the wall or something so you don't slip around. Ben says that he's going to take a guess and state that that wasn't a normal earthquake, and she tells him no. Doctor Strange took it upon himself to repair all of the damage that was recently done to Las Vegas. Downtown was annihilated, and he decided to fix it. But in the process, he unleashed something. They call it Hotel Inferno, and it's run by Mephisto. My organization is going to need you to join the fight against Mephisto. Ben asks her, Are you nuts? I stick to walls and shoot webs. Demon lords are way out of my pay grade. The Doctor can fix his own mess. The Avengers are going to help him anyway. Jezebel tells him that they will come, and they will provide no help at all. They will be turned into demons, spirits of vengeance. You know them as Ghost Riders. However, there is another group, one that can actually stand a chance against Mephisto, the Midnight Suns. Ben scoffs. <laughs> that sounds like a crappy band name. Look, whatever your group or organization or whatever is. But Jezebel stops him. The Diogenes Initiative. Ben tells her, I've heard of that before. Black Marvel mentioned it once. Jezebel says, look, we have June. Go out there and act like a damn hero, or very bad things are going to happen to your Aunt June, understand? Ben stares for a moment and tells her, yeah, I understand. I'm also going to assume that you aren't really a little girl, huh? She tells him, no, no, I am not. And Ben tells her, good. Just as Jezebel asks why is that, Ben punches her across the room and into the wall. She gets up, ow. And Ben says, oh, did that hurt? She coughs, telling him yes, and he leaves, telling her good. Later, down at the local gun store, a demon jumps through the window, and the store owner shouts for him to get out. The demon lunges at him, but before he can reach him, the demon is webbed up and pulled back. Ben asks the demon, how about we go outside and leave the poor guy alone? The demon sprouts wings from its back, and Ben tells it, crap, now that's not fair. It starts to fly upwards into the ceiling, and Ben begins to yell, it's not gonna work! My feet are sticky enough that no matter what! But seconds later, the demon breaks through the ceiling, ripping Ben off the ground, and he thinks to himself, perfect, just perfect! Betcha Peter never had days like this! As the demon flies off with Ben Riley dangling from behind, Ben sees a sign and webs onto it, pulling the demon back down, slamming it into the sign. He then sighs, telling himself, Okay, now that that's over, with time to go back to the gun store and suit up. He equips several guns, a tactical helmet, sidearms, and decides that he's ready to take on Mephisto and the demon horde. 
But as he finishes up, there's a scream coming from inside. Speeding down the road, a demon in a cement truck drives straight towards a group of people shouting, This is what the city needs! Urban renewal! Ben quickly webs onto the side of it, climbing in, telling the demon, This commute is really hell, isn't it? A short while later across town, Wong stands before a group of heroes recently turned into Ghost Riders stating that they need to think of a new plan. And that's when a cement truck plows into the Ghost Riders, with Ben hopping out telling everyone, Hey hurry up! This isn't gonna keep them down long. You'll be safe with me. Maybe. Now with Damnation Issue 3. Doctor Strange fires another blast it down onto Wong and Bats asks, Shouldn't you be trying the whole, Steven, I know you're in there thing. Wong shields himself stating, I would if that were true. But the truth is, if that thing is our friend, Steven's soul already belongs to Mephesto. Doctor Strange flies downward, grabbing Wong by the neck, shouting, Look at me! Gaze into the stare of! But as he pauses for a moment, he says, Holy crap! This place is bananas! Wong opens his eyes, asking, Bats? And from inside of Doctor Strange's body, Bats tells him, Yeah, never possessed anyone before, but you did say that there was a vacancy. Bats begins to flex his hand, stating, Hey, thumbs, that's fun. Meanwhile, over with Blade still trapped under Thor's hammer, the others try to come up with a plan to help when Mr. Knight says, I've got an idea. Maybe someone inside my head is worthy of picking up the thing. Elsa tells him to knock it off, and as he tries to lift it, the hammer lifts. Mr. Knight yells, See, I'm not crazy. In fact, I'm worthy. I am, whoa! The hammer rockets out of Mr. Knight's hand and back to Thor, who then calls, Avengers, assemble! Mr. Knight dusts his hands off, stating, Well, I was worthy. And Els asks if it's raining blood now. Well, that's just great. Iron Fist looks back at where Blade was, but sees him not there, asking, Yo, where did that guy go? And outside, Blade is holding onto Thor's hammer as it goes back, stabbing Thor right in the eye. He gets up, stating, Yeah, thanks for the drink but I gotta split. Also, that sword in your eye is a bomb. Enjoy. The handle of the sword explodes, but as the smoke clears, the rest of the converted heroes all stand up. And Blade simply says, well, crap! Wong rallies everyone together, telling them that this is it. This is where it ends. Everyone begins to take on an Avenger. And as they begin to struggle, Wong shouts to Johnny to do it. Johnny rides in and is immediately knocked off his bike by Black Panther Ghost Rider. Black Panther lifts up Johnny, telling him, Stare! Behold your penance! And after a few seconds, Johnny says, Uh, yeah, that's not really gonna work. Not really the penance type. Nice try, though. Johnny then kicks Black Panther in the groin and laughs, getting back at his bike. <laughs> Amateurs. He revs it up and begins to drive to the side of Hotel Inferno. And just as he reaches the top, he crashes into Mephesto's penthouse. Mephesto sits up in his chair, telling him, Well, that was a neat trick. But this can't be. Right? This can't be the grand total of Wong's little plan, can it? Johnny stares at Mephesto's eyes, telling him, It's been a long day coming. Why don't we just end this? Just you win! But before he could finish, Mephesto blows out his fire, telling him, Oh, please. Johnny asks, What did you just do? And Mephesto tells him that he lifted the curse. You're human again. Congratulations. And he kicks Johnny out of the hotel. Meanwhile, over in Iron Fist 78, Iron Fist slowly begins to see the world around him change and turn to white. He looks around, stating, Hey, I was just fighting in Vegas. But this is Vegas. It feels like... And that's when Iron Fist hears the words, Harold, pull me up! When he looks back, he sees his father plummeting into the snow and he runs over. Iron Fist's father, Wendell, looks up, asking, Is that you? Danny, I died so you could be more! But you failed me, Danny! You failed me and your mother! As Wendell's icy hand reaches up, a voice calls out to Iron Fist, telling him to run. Iron Fist asks if that's Mom, and Wendell says, You can't save her! You're too late! You're always too late! Wolves begin to surround Iron Fist's mother, Heather, as she tells him to leave, but Iron Fist kicks the wolves back, shouting, No! Heather grabs Iron Fist's hand, telling him, You need to make Harold Meacham pay for doing this, for killing me and your father. Please! Then Iron Fist clenches his fist, telling her, I promise, I will get revenge. And just then a voice shouts, Liar! Iron Fist looks back to see his younger self walking up, telling him, You made a promise, and you lied. Mommy and Daddy died for us, all so you can become this. The younger Danny points at the mark on his chest, yelling, All of those years of training, turning them into the perfect weapon, all with one goal. The scenery changes, and Harold is now sitting in his wheelchair, stating that he waited ten years for this. Kill me. The younger Danny says that this was his chance, but you broke the promise. 
And Iron Fist yells, no, Harold's life was ruined. He was a pathetic old man. Letting him live was punishment. He wanted to die, so I denied him that. The younger Danny then asks, really? Did it even cross your mind that Harold said those things so that you wouldn't kill him? But then somebody else stepped in to ensure that you'd never be able to deliver on your promise. Iron Fist watches as a shadow stabs Harold, and as the shadow steps forward, Iron Fist asks if that's Miranda. Miranda says that his mother, his father, they gave their lives for him. Hell, she died twice for him. Why? Why does everyone around him die so that Danny Rand can live? Iron Fist begins to cry, stating that he tried to find her, but Miranda screams, Lies! You left me! Left me with them! As more of Iron Fist's memories come back to haunt him, he's suddenly surrounded by his past, and young Danny tells him that he belongs here. For everything that he's ever done, for all the lives that he's sacrificed, all with nothing to return, he deserves this. And another voice tells Iron Fist to take his younger self's hand. Iron Fist looks up, and he sees Mephesto sitting on his throne, telling him, This is where you belong. Iron Fist slowly reaches out, and then another voice tells him, Don't do it, kid. He looks back and sees Orson. Orson goes on telling him that he's stronger than this. The devil is trying to play him. And then Iron Fist sees Fat Cobra pushing through the crowd, punching, telling him, WAKE UP! As he shakes his head, he's back in Las Vegas asking where did he... But Fat Cobra tells him, I found you unconscious on the road. You were staring off into nothingness, babbling like a drunken fool and drooling. Well, also like a drunken fool. To wake you up, I had to administer a ten-finger lightning slap to bring you back from a catatonic state. It was an incredibly powerful strike. And there was a good chance that it could have killed you. But seeing how alive you are, it did not. Also, now that you're awake, what's going on? There's demons everywhere, Danny. Iron Fist thinks. I was fighting Hawkeye, but he was possessed, all lit up like a ghost rider. Next thing I know, I was in my own personal hell and... Damn it, I was penance stared! Fat Cobra tells him, right, well, now that that's over with, we should probably go to your fight. Poster said it was soon. As the demons attack, Iron Fist asks, wait, what posters? And Fat Cobra tells him, you should know, the ones that say Iron Fist fights for his soul at a hotel in Ferdo, they're everywhere. Iron Fist punches, releasing a massive amount of energy, knocking all the demons away, stating, Okay, let me have a look at that. He rips off a poster and it reads, Iron Fist will fight for his soul. Can the Kung Fu Master defeat 24 men in 24 hours? The two rush into the arena inside of Hotel Inferno and they see everyone cheering as the fight takes place. Iron Fist asks, who's he fighting? And the demon tells him that it's Iron Fist, man, he's fighting some dude. Sano something. It's like his 10th fight. He's been decimating them out there. Iron Fist runs down to the arena and sees someone fighting, but when he sees who it is, he says, no, it can't be. After the opponent is stopped on, a demon walks in the arena, shouting that the winner, by first round elimination, is still the undefeated Orson Randall, the Iron Fist. But back over in Scarlet Spider, issue 16. On the Las Vegas streets, Ben Riley joins the fight with Wong, asking if he's sure about this. Heading into Hotel Inferno is pretty much giving Mephesto some home field advantage, isn't it? And Wong tells him to look around. The entirety of Las Vegas is his home field now. Ben tells him, yeah, but that's the thing. People always say that before they charge into battle that they'll lose. In order to convince themselves, they have a chance. And Wong tells him, then that's why you need to stay behind. Once we attack, if Mephesto summons help, we're going to need someone on the outside stopping them. So Ben swings off stating, sure, no problem. My spider sense can help determine which people are bad guys and which aren't. It'll just make things easier. So he webs up the entrance of the city and stands triumphantly stating that that should do it a nice barrier of webbing. Also, I made it thick enough to last for a few hours. I'd like to see someone try and get through that. And just as a police car speeds up, Ben thinks, okay, my first test. Two officers get out and one asks what's going on. Where the hell did the hotel come from? So Ben tells him that he actually just answered his own question with that statement. The other officer says that they need to hurry and get in there to make sure everything's okay. But Ben stops him, stating that they can't get past the webs. Trust me on that. The officer asks what webs, and when Ben looks back, he sees everyone running into the city and his webs are gone. Just as he asks what's going on, his spider sense goes off and the officers begin to shoot at him. He jumps up webbing them, stating, Ah, oh, great! More people are possessed by demons! After webbing them up and tossing them in their trunk, Ben says, all right, that should do it. And that's when a group of people run up asking what he's doing to the cops. He tells them that it's okay, they weren't really cops, they were demons. And one of the men asks, says, when are demons running around Las Vegas? So Ben tries to explain that they need to go back home, but then a woman in the crowd says that she has a better idea. How about we cut the spider into pieces? A few moments later, in an unruly crowd webbed up, Ben sits down asking, am I crazy? Everyone's evil. 
Problem is, none of them are triggering my spider sense until they attack. I've been fighting bad guys for years. I should know this stuff by now. As he sits there, a man calls out asking Ben what's going on. I was out with my wife and daughter and we got separated. Have you seen them? So Ben gets up asking, really? That's the strategy? He webs up the man's glasses and as he pulls them off, he sees the man's eyes are red and he says, yeah, I thought so. So he punches him and the man asks, are you crazy? You just chipped a tooth. So Ben proceeds to beat up the lonely man and just before he can knock him out, a voice shouts, Jimmy? Oh my God, Jimmy. Ben looks over at the woman and child with the child asking why Spider-Man is beating up their daddy. He walks over saying, first, I'm the Scarlet Spider. And second, that man isn't your father. He has red eyes just like the other. And the woman stops him shouting, he has an inflammation of the middle layer of his eyes. He was undergoing treatment for it, you lunatic. The little girl then says that she thought Spider-Man was supposed to help people, but he's just a bully. As the family walks away, Ben says, okay, maybe I was mistaken this time. Can I help you getting your, but together the family turns back shouting, no. Ben watches the family leave and a voice tells him, it's not so easy to tell the good from the bad. Is it Scarlet Spider? Ben turns around and opens fire on Mephesto, but Mephesto waves them off, telling him, Bullets, don't insult me. We are not your enemies here. But you wouldn't know that, would you? You have a great deal of trouble telling the difference. Maybe it's because deep down, you've let yourself become the villain. Suddenly, Ben's gun turns into a martini glass, and he throws it, yelling, Don't distract me! Mephesto then says, How about we discuss this elsewhere? With a stamp of his fingers, Ben finds himself on the top of a large cliff. And Mephesto says, We call this place Devil's Tower. Not as cushy as a hotel, but it's not without its charms. We're here to discuss business. I cannot read minds, but I can read souls, and your soul is the most black and tormented thing. The fact of the matter is that you really can't tell the difference between good and evil. More so in yourself, which is why so many of them see you as a villain. But see, that's where I come in. I can help. Your aunt June was recently kidnapped, right? I can get her back. The little girl Abigail, who needs a cure for a fatal disease, I can save her. But most importantly, your soul can be purified. Ben tells him that he's lying. Mephesto holds out his hand, telling him, I am the Lord of Evil. Cleansing a soul is easy. So join me. Have a fresh start. Be what you were truly meant to be. A hero. Ben thinks about it for a moment. And then the Scarlet Spider shakes Mephesto's hand, telling him, deal. As Johnny fell out of the penthouse of the Hotel Inferno, he can see Mephesto's smile from that window. But Johnny wasn't falling to the ground outside. He was falling deeper than that. He was going straight to hell. Both he and the rider slam into the ground and the rider gets up telling him, now that you're dead, there's no reason to stick around anymore. Johnny gets up telling him, wait. And the rider kicks him back shouting, no, I'm gonna do what I came here to do. Punish the guilty and make their souls burn. Johnny looks at the horde of demons charging at him and he tells him, look, spirit, buddy, we're only getting started here. The demons pile on, stabbing and kicking the both of them. But Johnny pulls the pitchfork in him and he yells, If we're gonna get out of here, we have to work together, Ryder. The Ryder sits up with two stakes in his eyes, stating, I control my own destiny now. No more being dragged along by those foolish human missions. Johnny pulls the Ryder out from under the demons, telling him, Look, you may be a spirit of vengeance, but without a host, you're just a weapon without a pair of hands to use you. As much as it sucks, we need each other. The rider jumps up, burning the stakes in his eyes, flailing his chain whip, asking, What do I get for my cooperation? Johnny tells him, You get the best reward. You get to spit in Mephesto's face and walk away to tell the tale. Besides, who else is gonna fight in the giant arena up ahead? As the two pass the gates, Johnny says, We gotta merge back. But the rider tells him, No! If you want that, you'll have to prove yourself to me. The guy right over there is dripping with sin. Kick that sitter's ass and then we'll talk. Johnny looks at the seemingly ordinary man as he fixes his glasses, but a second later, Johnny is launched across the arena into a wall. He dusts himself off, walking back over to the center and the man starts to punch into him again. Johnny waits for a moment after the man finishes and then smiles as his wounds close up and he snaps the man's arm in two. And the rider tells him, about time, I'm starved. While the rider feeds on the sinner's soul, Johnny climbs into the stands, telling him, I hoped everyone enjoyed the show, but I get an offer a lot of you are going to have a hard time saying no to. The plan is to storm the gates of Mephesto's castle 
and plant myself right on that throne. While Mephesto is out doing whatever it is that he's doing, we can take advantage of the situation. You all seem a little bored. Who's in? All of the demons in front of him stare and then one of them tells him, with all due respect, hell no. Unlike you, we live here. We aren't about to just go and make the ruler here angry. A giant elephant man then says, that actually sounds like fun. What do we gotta do? And then another demon laughs, stating, there are seven circles between us and the castle, even more punishing than the last. All stalked by the dread Typhon, son of earth and hell. Plus, there's a little old Cerebri over there. If you survive all of that, there's a final room, a place where one's worst fears come to life, bigger and badder than ever before. So good luck with all of that, human. The first demon tosses Johnny a piece of paper telling him that even now, thousands of souls are swarming to protect Mephesto's throne. They're all hoping to brown nose their way out of suffering. Here it is gonna be tremendously painful. So by all means, take this crudely drawn map. The two then begin to make their way to Mephesto's castle, fighting off the demon horde every step of the way. First on the endless stretch of highway, then over the lava pits, and finally into the city, or at least what resembles a city. But here the two are faced with the one thing that Johnny hoped to avoid, Typhon, the son of earth and hell. The rider says, it sounds like you're actually scared. It's just a machine. And Johnny tells him, yeah, well, maybe, but that thing will be chewing on you for a millennia before it spits you out. We gotta stop this, together. Just imagine how much it'll hurt these Hellions when we give them the pennant stare because they're trying to save us. The rider asks, can I do it as many times as I want? And Johnny says, sure, all you can eat. The rider tells him, fine, take the wheel. Let's go kill a truck. Once Johnny jumps back into the Ghost Rider body, he whips the chain up, grabbing onto the flying demon and swings over to the side. As he lands, he sits on the giant elephant man's shoulders, telling him, oh, you came. And the elephant man tells him, yeah, really don't have much to lose here, so why not? As Typhon spins back around, Johnny tells him, get ready, this is gonna hurt a bit. The elephant man tells him, you aren't gonna be the one to be hurting. Soon, the elephant man bursts into flames and charges into the mass of Typhon, aiming straight for the steps of Mephesto's castle. But before going any further, the elephant man sets Johnny down, telling him, I'm gonna go outside and play with the three-headed dogs. Ain't nothing in that castle I need. Johnny walks up and kicks the front door, stating, Knock! Knock! I'm here to get this over with! As Johnny walks up the stairs, he remembers what the demon said before. If he can survive crossing the circles, there will be one final room. He turns back to his human form, telling the rider, Give me a second. I gotta do this one on my own. There's a reason that Johnny took on this mission, though. He knew that he would die. He knew that he would have to face his own fears. But that's the thing. If you had seen what he's seen, you wouldn't be afraid of anything. He's just a kid of a hick carney who wound up tied to the saddle of a monster. Gone up against the worst things ever thrown at him. What the hell does he have to be afraid of anymore? Johnny pulls back the curtains, walking into Mephesto's throne, turning back into the Ghost Rider. He sits down and a crown of fire appears over his head. Was that it? Was it that easy? Maybe Mephesto wanted this. Maybe he's happy to pass the reins on for a bit. A demon walks up, kneeling before Johnny, stating, All of this is yours now. Tell me what to do. Johnny shrugs, stating, There are some things worse than death, and now I rule over all of them. Meanwhile, back out of the streets of the Vegas Strip, a certain ghostly dog jumps into the shell of a body of a certain doctor. The first thing bats notice after possessing Doctor Strange, I have thumbs now! Those are fun! And Wong yells, good boy, how long are you able to hold out? But bats begins to look into Strange's mind and tell him, I'm not sure, it's pretty bad in here. He thinks he's fighting off ghost riders with Scarlet Witch and Loki of all people. Let's try shaking him loose and see what happens. Bats walks through the fight, calling out to Strange, asking, What's going on in here? And Strange asks, Can't you see? The end of the world is nigh. This isn't the time to. And Bats tells him, No, listen, this isn't real. Mephesto has your soul and has put you in some kind of demonic simulation thing. You're actually fighting your friends in the real world. Strange asks, Why would I believe something like? But just then he's hit by the flaming arrow from Hawkeye. And as he stands there on fire, everything fades and Doctor Strange sighs, telling him, I should have seen that. Loki and Wanda coming to save me? Clea? If I wasn't half dead, I'd be impressed. Bats then says, Okay, everything is white. How do we leave? Strange then says, Honestly, I don't have that answer. Each possession's a bit different. We appear to be in some kind of nether realm. Bats tells him, Great! I knew I could count on the Sorcerer Supreme to explain a magic thing. So Strange sighs, Well, you aren't the first person to be let down. I've had an extraordinarily terrible year, so... But Bats shouts, Really? 
because my owner and best friend of 16 years had a heart attack and died, leaving me in a shelter. Then I was adopted two more times, abandoned at a magical vet's clinic, and got turned into a spy, and then I died and got brought back as a ghost by an actual god. But now, now I'm stuck in some soul prison with a mopey magician who can't pull his head out of his butt to help save his friends who are here to save him? Not to mention, I'm also an autopilot with your body fighting off the dark forces. Yeah, my bad. You've had a tough year. Please go on. The two sit in silence for a moment and Strange reaches out petting Bat's head, telling him, I'm sorry, do you want to get out of here? Bat asks, do you have a plan? And Strange tells him, nope. But while you were yelling, a giant door appeared with a blinking neon light that says exit written on it. The two begin to walk towards it and Bat says, you know it's a trap, right? And Strange tells him, yeah, I know. They walk through and they see rows and rows of people standing at slot machines and Bats then says, This is pretty on brand for Mephesto, huh? Strange looks at everyone stating that these must be the souls that Mephesto has imprisoned. All of these machines are rigged, they won't ever be able to. But then Strange stops seeing Clea standing at one of the machines. He starts running towards her with Bats yelling, WAIT! IT'S A TRAP! And Strange yells that that must be Wong's inside man. And Bats says, NO! Wong's inside man was that Spider-Man in the hoodie! Clea ain't part of this! She isn't even real! But Strange shouts, No! She needs me! But Clea's slot machine dings with a loss and a portal opens up, sucking her up along with Strange and Bats. Once the two land, Bats asks, Where are we? And Strange tells him, It's okay. This is the necrotic sub-realm. I've been to one of these before. He looks around to see Clea floating there, and as he reaches out towards her, a tentacle whips out, grabbing a hold of her. Bats then shouts, What's that thing? And soon an eye opens up, shouting, it is I, Lord of the Nothing Realm, Conqueror of the Midnight, Devourer God of the Eternal Ever Was. I, Shuma Gorath, now burn! A Shuma Gorath fires a concentrated beam down on Strange. He shields him, and Bad says, This doesn't make any sense! Gorath doesn't belong here! Soon the shield gives way, burning away Strange's arm, and he shouts to Bats, Get out of here! I have to save Clea! Bats just tells him, I'm not going anywhere without you! We have to figure out but Shuma Gorath attacks again, but before the beam could hit, Thor steps in to protect Strange, yelling, I say thee nay. Strange asks, how is she? And a hand reaches down, telling him, it's impressive, huh? We kinda need to hurry. So you know, on your feet. Strange looks back at where the female voice is coming from and asks if that's Jane. Thor continues to absorb the blast, stating, yes, by all means, the mighty Thor shall handle this monstrosity for as long as you need so that you can have a wonderfully casual talk. Strange says that he doesn't understand, how are you here? And Jane waves her arm, stating, that's crazy, right? We all fell for the same bait. Strange asks, who's we? And another voice tells him, you're an Avenger. You're never alone. Black Panther, Falcon, Hawkeye, and Captain Marvel all step out. And Black Panther says, there will be time for celebration and reunion later, once we kill this monster. Captain Marvel asks, how about it? You want to get rowdy with an Elder God in a necrotic soul prison? Strange looks back, telling him, hell yeah, I do. And as everyone's attack seemingly do nothing to Shuma Gorath, there is one that blinds him. Shuma Gorath shouts in pain, shouting, I will be back! I will return! And Strange yells for him, wait! But then another voice tells him that he should be thanking him. Strange looks back, stating, oh god, Dormammu? Dormammu stands on a cliff, telling him, it's nice to see you again. Now, if you don't mind, what do you say we all get the hell out of here? However, while Doctor Strange escapes the necrotic sub-realm, back at the Hotel Inferno, Iron Fist runs into the locker room to find Orson Randall after his most recent fight. Iron Fist hugs Orson, and Orson says, Please tell me in the time that I've been gone that you didn't get yourselves killed. Iron Fist tells him no, not for a lack of trying though, but you're supposed to be dead. And Orson laughs, yeah, I know, I was there too. But if there's one thing that I can say about the experience, being dead ain't no picnic. Iron Fist then asks, what is all of this about? Why are you fighting? And Orson tells him, because the devil made me an offer. 24 fights in 24 hours. If I'm still standing in the end, I get my soul back. Unless Mephesto pulls a fast one, which he is the devil, so there's that. Iron Fist then asks, how are you holding up? And just as Orson says that he's still standing, a voice calls out, indeed he is, and the crowd is loving it. Just then a flashy looking demon walks in and Iron Fist asks, is that Decay? Orson asks, have you met? Iron Fist tells him, yeah, once before. Decay smiles, telling him, You seem to be in a combative mood here today. Perhaps I could interest you in joining the competition. There must be someone you misread, someone who passed away. What if Mephesto could bring them back? All you have to do is fight. Orson steps between the two, stating, The kid's not interested. What are you doing here anyway? Decay scoffs, telling Orson, You're doing the ring for your next fight. Better get out there and put on a show. As the three leave for the ring, 
fat cobra asks, Why don't we just knock off that demon's head and break out of here? Orison tells him it wouldn't matter. Decay is just an underling. Mephesto is the one holding the deed to my soul. I just gotta play by the rules for a little bit longer. As Orison steps into the ring, the announcer shouts that the Kai champion, the outcast of Kun Lun, will be fighting Zadkiel's bad boy, the mouth of the south, Deacon. As the bell is rung, a large man runs in, cracking Orson in the face, sending him straight into the ground. Fat Cobra yells for him to get back up. One cannot fight while on their back! Orson gets up, kicking Deacon across the face, but after shaking it off, Deacon goes back in, beating Orson down. Orson crawls up to his knee, saying, Just get it over with already! And Deacon tells him, Of course. As Deacon gets close, Orson charges up his fist and hits Deacon with an explosive iron fist! The bell rings, and the announcer shouts their winner, By knockout! Still undefeated after 11 fights, Orson Iron Fist Randall! Orson spits out a mouthful of blood onto the mat, and Iron Fist runs in, stating, You are in rough shape. You need some time to recuperate. Orson laughs, Kid, time ain't something I got. After what seemed like only moments in the locker room, the announcer comes in, stating that the next challenger is on deck, Mr. Randall. Orson feels his body tense up as he stands, telling Iron Fist that there's only one way he's getting out of this, and he ain't going back. Just keep an eye on his back and make sure nothing bad happens. As the three walk out of the locker room, a demon tells him that he's afraid that that is impossible. Decay requests a Daniel and Fat Cobra's presence. Orson says that they can tell Decay that he can wait until after the fight, but the demon tells him, I'm sorry if what I said sounded like less than a command. Iron Fist pats Orson on the back, telling him it'll be fine. They'll just go see what Decay has to say. A few moments later, Iron Fist and Fat Cobra head up to Decay's office and ask what do they want. Decay smiles, stating that they already know what he wants. He wants them to fight! Iron Fist asks why. Why would I do that? What would I even get? And Decay laughs. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you sound like a man with a proposition. Go on! Iron Fist tells him, I'll fight for Orson. Let him go and give back his soul. If I lose, then you keep my soul. If I win, when I win, all of us walk out of here for free. Decay thinks for a moment and then says, That is a generous offer, but one that I will have to decline. However, I do have a counter offer. Fat Cobra should recognize the lovely woman next to him, right? It is his very own mother who died giving birth to Fat Cobra's impressive heft. Maybe Fat Cobra would like to get reacquainted with her while we all watch the next fight. Down below, Orson walks into the ring and the announcer reads off the next challenger. His opponent, recently returning from a long stint in hell, Kun Lun's very own forgotten child, the one that they call Death Sting. Iron Fist looks in horror. No, 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 no! The opponent takes down her hood, and the announcer shouts, Miranda Rand Kai! Iron Fist turns back yelling, That's my sister! And Decay smiles, Anyone can fight for the soul, just as I said before. Iron Fist charges up the almighty Iron Fist, and before he can swing, a demon tackles him and a fight breaks out. Iron Fist and Fat Cobra easily take care of the pack of demons, with Iron Fist yelling, Stop the damn fight! But Decay bursts out laughing, asking, Did you think that we weren't prepared for this? I got thousands of demons in the stables. However, if you wish to save Miranda and Fat Cobra's mother, then you just have to fight for me. Iron Fist asks, Who would he have to fight? And Decay tells him, You're not really in a position to ask questions. You simply say yes or no, but you must answer quickly. The fight has already begun! Iron Fist is currently standing in front of the demon Decay, asking who would he have to fight to free his sister and Orson. And Decay tells him, he's not really in a position to ask questions. It's simply a yes or a no, but you must answer quickly. Your fight has already begun. Miranda jumps up, kicking Orson in the head, yelling, finally, a face to put to the name of the coward who turned their back on Kun Lun. Orson rubs his jaw, stating that he had his reasons for leaving, and he doesn't remember seeing her during his time there. The two go back and forth exchanging blows, but before Orson can finish it, Iron Fist runs into the ring shouting for them to stop. That's my sister, Orson! Orson looks down and as he releases his grip, he says, Great. That's just great. Miranda gets up hugging Iron Fist, stating that it's so great to see him. But is he dead as well? How? And Iron Fist tells her, No, I'm not. I'm here to... And just then, Decay steps in, telling them, He's offered to fight! Daniel and his chunky cobra friend offered to put their lives on the line in order to save you both. Orson looks at Iron Fist asking, What did you do? And Iron Fist tells him, I couldn't sit by and watch you go through this. 
So Decay laughs, wiping a tear away. Oh, it's so very touching! A fight is always so much more interesting when there's a good backstory. Anyway, the deal has changed! Decay turns to the crowd, telling everyone, We have new contestants in a new fight! Orson Randall, Miranda Rand, her half-brother Daniel Rand, and the one that they call Fat Cobra, in a battle royale against the 12 remaining opponents. The last side standing at the end of the melee wins their souls and their freedom. The losers will spend the rest of eternity in the most gruesome, violent, depraved depths of hell. Orson yells at them, This is insane! You should have stayed out of this, Danny! Now you've gone and put four lives on the line instead of just one. Fat Cobra tells them, Actually, it's five. This is my mother, Mo Chow, and I am happy to see her, even in these circumstances. Iron Fist stops. Look, there's only 12 of them, which means we each only have to take down three. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The announcer calls out that their 12 opponents are currently making their way to the ring. Hailing from the deepest depths of hell, the worst of the worst, the demons known to give Lucifer himself nightmares, the newer, deadlier, badder, legion of violence. As the demons climb in, Orson says, great, we only need to fight three each. Iron Fist looks at the massive demon saying, I didn't think that this is what we were going to fight. I thought it'd be like normal people. And Orson tells him, This is literally why we don't make deals with the devil. It's why the saying exists. Miranda tightens her gloves, telling them both, I've never seen two grown men, iron fists, no less, terrified of a fight. Did you not defeat Shao Lao, the undying to earn your title? Each of you has defeated an ancient dragon, and yet the appearance of low-level demons has you scared? Orson tells her, You're right. And Iron Fist yells, Yeah, let's do this. Iron Fist is quickly punched out of the ring, and he runs back, breaking the face of the demon who threw him out. Orson gets picked up by a demon, stating, I would give anything to have my guns right about now. And Miranda asks if he is an Iron Fist or an Iron Gun. Stop looking for an easy way out. Orson rips apart the demon holding him, stating, this girl's a real peach, huh? Christmases must be a blast at the Rand household. Miranda punches the demon to death, telling him, I've never spent a Christmas with my brother, but I am very much looking forward to it. Iron Fist punches the head off another demon, telling them both, It's like I said, easy peasy, lemon! And a demon tackles him, with the case shouting, Why are you still standing? Twelve demons against four. Five lowly humans, end them already. One of the larger demons smacks Orson away, and just before he can finish it, Iron Fist runs over, knocking him out. Orson gets back up, stating that that one really rung his bell. And Iron Fist asks if he can stand, so Orson tells him, no, I'm done. But these last three, they're worse than the nine we've already put down. Orson powers himself up, and Iron Fist tells him, we can handle this. You can't come back just to die here. Orson smiles. I gotta do this. See you on the other side, Daniel Randkai. Orson then breaks away from Iron Fist's grasp, running him with both fists on fire, jumping up, telling them, It's about time you all went back to hell! He comes crashing down as a loud explosion goes off, launching one of the demons up into Decay's box. And as the smoke clears, Iron Fist runs over to Orson, telling him to hang on, but Orson tells him it's too late. He lived a long life, dodged a lot of responsibility, caused a lot of havoc. This way, at least he can give him back family. It was worth it. Goodbye, Daniel. Iron Fist tries to lift him, but his body turns to ash, and it fades away. And back up in Decay's box, there's a knock at the door as Decay crawls out from under the giant demon. The demon pokes his head in telling him that Mephesto would like a word with him. Decay tells the demon to tell Mephesto that he's a little busy at the moment. He will, the demon then says. Mephesto insists on speaking with you immediately. Decay asks... Did he sound angry? The demon says, He sounded very angry. He's already begun the process for creating an even lower rung of hell for you. Meanwhile, back up at the casino floor, Iron Fist says that he hates to fight and run, but he's got friends depending on him. Still another fire that needs to be put out. Miranda tells him that she can come with, but Iron Fist tells her no. She just got back. Fat Cobra can bring her to his place and he'll beat them later. Just do him a favor. Try not to kill Fat Cobra when he speaks. Miranda quietly says no promises. And with that, Iron Fist heads back to the Vegas Strip, knowing that he can do the same as Orson and lay his life down to ensure the safety of his friends. He allowed himself to become filled with doubt about his place, his role. He lost touch with his chi and identity, no longer. He is Daniel Rand, the Iron Fist, a living weapon, champion of Kun Loon. And it feels great to be back. Meanwhile, back with Ben Riley, the Scarred Spider. Ben takes a moment to breathe, telling himself that he made a deal with the devil to save Abigail's life and save his own soul. 
Doing something like that should mess a person up, right? Like, disfigure them into some kind of evil thing? Ben takes off his mask and checks his face, telling himself, Okay, maybe my soul is waiting to see what I actually do first. Whether I'm on the side of Mephesto or the Midnight Suns. Just how am I helping the Midnight Suns? By standing guard outside the stupid hotel! Then Riley punches a chunk off the side of the hotel, and as it regrows, Ben says to himself, Great! Not only does my hand hurt, but the wall fixed itself! At least the deal with Mephesto is simple. He'll cure Abby, cure my soul, and all I have to do is help him in a fight he'll probably win anyway. But then again, this is Mephesto. Might come up with some means to go back in the deal. And what am I supposed to do then? File a complaint with the Better Business Bureau? Just then a monster is thrown into a nearby car, narrowly missing Ben. He tells himself, okay, better make myself scarce and figure out what to do. Once Ben Riley gets his bearings, Ben climbs up onto the nearby building, watching over the fight, aiming his rifle right at Wong. Will he do it? Will he side Mephesto in the end? Elsewhere, Jezebel watches Ben through a monitor and says that this is bad. This is really bad. Those people are all super and all, but they aren't bulletproof. A man watching with her tells her that Ben isn't going to kill anyone. Have faith in the Scarlet Spider. All they can do now is watch. Back on the streets, Ben Riley trembles as he aims his rifle down at Wong's, telling himself that he just needs to do this one thing and Abby's life is saved. And as he looks behind him, he sees Ghost Rider Kane shouting, Traitor! You didn't shoot! You didn't do anything! Mephesto knows! Betrayer! Kane begins to breathe fire, and as he jumps away, Ben grabs him by the leg, swinging him into a wall. Kane slowly gets back up, and Ben sighs, telling him, This is not how I expected to be spending my weekend. I'm gonna have to shut you down, and I better make it fast. Hopefully this vial of holy water will do the trick. Just need to get Kane away from the area. Moments later, Kane lands looking for Ben, but Ben jumps down, stepping on Kane's head, pinning him to the ground. He then picks up Kane, pouring the vial of holy water down his throat, telling him, This is either gonna cure you or kill you, buddy. Really, either one of those is gonna be fine for me. Kane falls to the ground, holding his throat, and he lets out a fiery scream. And a few seconds later, Kane coughs, looking like his normal self. What the hell just happened, Ben? Ben helps him up, telling him, you got possessed. How did that happen? Kane tells him. A giant unearthly casino appeared out of nowhere. Naturally, I came to investigate it, same as you. But that's not what's bothering me. While I was possessed, the demon inside me kept yelling, traitor. Why would he say that? Ben doesn't answer and Kane grabs him going, what the hell did you do, Ben? Ben punches him off, telling him, I made a deal, okay? I made a deal to serve Mephesto and help stop the Midnight Suns. Kane shouts, asking him, are you out of your mind? And Ben asks him, don't you want to hear what the deal is about? Kane tells him, No! It's called a deal with the devil for a reason! Mephesto's going to screw you out of whatever he promised. So Ben stops him. He said he'd cure Abby. But at what cost, Ben? Her soul too? Even if he cured her, he'll likely arrange an accident afterwards so that she dies anyway. Ben pauses for a moment and scratches his head. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. So what are we supposed to do now? Mephesto isn't going to reward me for not helping. Might as well round up all the possessed humans and toss them into a pool of holy water. Kane stops him. That is most likely a good plan. Are you going to come and help? And Ben tells him, no. I'm going to show Mephesto what I've decided about our deal. The Midnight Suns need my help before it's too late. Moments later, down on the block, Ghost Rider Black Panther punches Mr. Knight to the ground and he leaps in to kill him. But Ben Riley swings in, knocking him out of the air. Ben Riley helps Mr. Knight up, asking, Hey, are you going to be all right? And Mr. Knight tells him, I'll survive. Good. Let's end this. But meanwhile, while everyone is fighting off the Ghost Rider Avengers, Mephesto rides out of the casino on Johnny Blaze's bike, and he stops just before Wong and the others. He tells them, Oh, it's so nice of you all to show up. Thanks so much for the new bike, I love it. Though, sadly, the delivery boy couldn't quite make it. Which begs the question, what was the plan? Sending a pawn of hell to face its king on his own turf? Now that I'm saying it out loud, doesn't that sound dumb? Because it really is. So what now, Wong? You sent Johnny to his death. You led all the little soldiers to their deaths. How does it feel? Wong stands there quiet, and then he looks up, smiling. Seconds later, all of the Ghost Riders turn and begin to blast Mephesto. As Ghost Rider Thor cracks Mephesto in the side of the face with Mjolnir, and then lays the hammer down on him, Wong asks, How does it feel? Iron Fist asks, What the hell is going on? Not that I'm complaining or anything. And Wong tells him, I'm sorry, but I couldn't speak on it before but everything is going to be okay now. Mephesto is right, always has been. He knew that we wouldn't win, not here, not in his realm. But this, this isn't exactly his realm, is it? Not fully anyway, but no, while he was here, his seat of power stood vacant. You see, I have a man on the inside. 
His name is Johnny Blaze, former Ghost Rider, new Lord of Hell. Wong turns to Bats the dog who is still inside Dr. Strange, telling him, It's okay, you can leave Steven with me now. The others catch Steven before he falls and he asks, And what's going on? Wong tells him it's okay now. It's nice to see you again. Just don't try and move your legs. They're both broken. Mephesto begins laughing, shouting, We will see if you speak the truth. If Johnny really did take my throne, let's all go have a look. The ground begins to crack with a loud crack of thoom, and a path to hell opens up. As the ground separates, Wong falls through and Strange screams, We have to save him! But Man-Thing reaches out, grabbing Wong's hand, and Wong yells back, It's okay! You have to trust me, I can fix this. So Strange tells him, No, it's okay to be scared, we all are. And Wong stops him, telling him, Whatever knows fear burns at the touch of the Man-Thing. Can't you see? There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Wong lets go and Strange shouts for him to come back, but a few moments later, Wong lands, and as he inspects himself, Johnny asks, Were you expecting something a bit more dramatic? Sorry to disappoint. Been a long time, Wong. And Wong tells him, Actually, you've only been dead for about 20 minutes. Maybe 15? Johnny asks him, Really? No way! That's crazy! Hell is crazy! But I'm going to guess we need something else. Wong tells him, I cannot thank you enough for your sacrifice, but this isn't for us. It's for Steven. Steven came to Las Vegas to resurrect something that was lost, something broken, and he came alone. And it was not because he thought he could do it himself, it's because he had no one else. Steven has had a difficult few years. He lost faith in himself, and in doing so, he lost faith that anyone would ever stand at his side again. We need to give him something, something to remind him that he's not alone. Johnny laughs, telling him, You do know that I have all those Avengers souls lying around, right? How about we give him one of those? A little bit of a juice in the tank. Wong tells him, no, not one of them, all of them. Back on the surface, Strange knocks Mephesto to the ground as the souls of the Avengers radiate inside of him. Mephesto asks, what is this? Strange comes down telling him, Avengers, assemble! Strange unleashes the powers of the Avengers, and Johnny tells Wong that once they get the city safe, do him a favor. Send Mephesto my way. Strange continues to pound into Mephesto, and Elsa Bloodstone asks, should we be, like, stopping him? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Mr. Knight tells her that Doctor Strange just became an Avengers god, and he's beating the devil to death. This is not a job for the Midnight Suns. Just then, the skies part as Strange holds up a giant bolt of lightning, and Mephesto yells, Okay, damn it! You can have your little city back! I give up! Strange looks down, telling him, I don't care! And with a thundering crackoom, Strange strikes down the bolt, banishing all of those who are unholy from the city. As the skies clear, Black Panther asks, and what happened? And Falcon tells him, some magic stuff. Captain Marvel then says, we all smell like brimstone. Wait, do I smell like brimstone? Thor shouts, nay, we smell of victory. The day has been saved. Thanks again to the Avengers. Everyone in the Midnight Suns turns and leaves while Elsa Bloodstone quietly says idiots under her breath. And back in the crater, Strange kneels down, telling them that he doesn't understand. He had him and then, but Wong sits next to him, telling him that Mephesto escaped as the lightning fell. He saw. Strange is then speechless. He doesn't know what to say. You risked your life to rescue me after everything I've done. But Wong reassures him. That's enough. I simply asked myself, even if Strange hated me, even if it meant the utter end of existence and corruption of every soul on Earth, would Steven come for me? Of course, Wong. Without a second thought. And Wong tells him, yes, that's the thing. I did give your plan a second thought and then a third. And that is why your plan worked. The two silently sit and they burst out laughing. And Wong says that he was always terrible at making plans. So Strange tells him, I'm sorry that I ruined your plan by letting Mephesto get away. Oh, I'm not so sure, Strange, because that's been taken care of. And deep down in hell, Mephesto sneaks around a corner when suddenly a chain is wrapped around his neck. Johnny stands there with all of the past ghost riders telling him, It has been a long time. Got some folks that want to talk to you, Mephesto. And back on Earth, just as Wong is finishing his sentence, there's a flash of light, and Mephesto appears before them chained up. On his shirt is a note from Johnny, stating, Go easy on him. He had a rough couple hundred of years in the last few seconds. Or, you know, don't. See you soon. As the sun comes up, Mephesto got what he wanted. A penthouse suite with a beautiful view overlooking the Vegas Strip, fortified with enough magical words to keep even a demonic hulk in line. And for the hotel, well... Apparently having the devil in your penthouse makes for one hell of a business. The Hotel Inferno became the number one casino on the Strip. All in all, things went horribly. Couldn't have gotten worse, really. But you know what? Bat the dog asks if he would do it again in a heartbeat. And Strange laughs. <laughs> hell yeah. As the two get up, 
Bats tells him, All right, that's the last hell pun. And Strange sighs, telling him, Damn. The next day, Doctor Strange sits down to go over the events of what exactly happened. How that magic comes at the cost. For example, if you were to hit somebody, the price is that they may hit you back. Action, then reaction. Cost paid. So if you were to say, resurrect a city and all of its inhabitants from the dead, the price for that action may be that every single demonic entity hates you and wants you dead, and they take notice of a very large hole in the fabric of the dimensional magic that you left wide open. Luckily for us, though, only one of the collective lords of the several hells managed to get out. The others were cast down, barred from their way back home, and banished into the necro realm of eternity. That was until he showed up. Person sitting with Strange says that that's quite the story, and Strange tells them that the information could be a bit off, considering Dormammu is the one telling the story. But seeing as he and the other Avengers were trapped in a necro realm with Dormammu, they were kind of limited on options. Dormammu claimed that he wished to escape the realm so that he may return to his own, which everyone knew was a lie. He wanted their help to open a portal so that he could leave, allowing him passage to Earth, which, by the way, is something that is literally his entire job to prevent from doing. But without Dormammu's help, everyone would have been trapped, if forever, in the hell that Mephesto had created while he took over the world. So after speaking with the other Avengers who were trapped in this hellscape, they all agreed on one thing. The Avengers would go first, and then Dormammu back to his realm, and then he would be the last one to go. Dormammu agreed, and even gave him a spiritual arm in the process. The portal opened, and he blasted Dormammu. The Avengers stayed behind while he jumped through the portal, and Doctor Strange sealed it back up, returning back to the world of the living. Anyway, how have you been, Clea? Clea stares for a moment and asks, Well, what happened next? Strange tells her, Oh, right. Johnny Blaze went to hell and he became its new king. He liberated everyone's souls, and then I got possessed by the combined spirits of the Avengers. After that, I struck Mephesto down with a magic soul lightning bolt and imprisoned him for eternity in his Las Vegas tower. It was quite the spectacle. Clea sips her tea, telling him, I wish I could have seen all that. But why do you think Mephesto used my image to lure you in? Strange sighs, telling her, Maybe he knew that you would be the only person that I would believe who would come and help me. You really are the only person who hasn't let me down. Recently. Clea reaches over, taking Doctor Strange's hand, telling him, Quit being such a baby. You just got done telling me this immense story about how all of your friends came to your side when you needed help, and you're still mopey. What's changed? What is missing? What have you lost that you feel so alone when surrounded by those who love you? Strange looks away, and Clea drinks her coffee, telling him, Mephesto should have used her as a lure, Strange. You'd still be there. Strange tells her, don't do this. She's a... She was just a friend. Clea gets up telling him, I know, but you should go home, take a shower, shave that ridiculous thing off your face, and call her. So later, Strange returns to the Sanctum Sanctorum, sits down on the stoop, and he calls Zelma. The phone rings, and he simply says, Hey, yeah, it's me. And there you have it, Marvel's Damnation event right here at Comic Story and Full Story. Now, if you only like our full stories and you want to get more, make sure you subscribe right here, as there's going to be quite a few of them coming up in rapid succession. I'll see you guys next time right here at Comic Story and Full Story.